This is our friend's outdated kitchen, and they've asked for our help to give it a fresh update. But what they don't know is that we have several surprises up our sleeve to turn this kitchen into something beyond what they imagined. So come along for the ride as we surprise our friends with a brand new kitchen. Before we get started, we want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Mental Tracker. Mental Tracker is an app that helps you track your sleeping habits, including when you're in deep sleep or in light sleep. It can even help detect sleep apnea. The goal of this app is to help people achieve well-being through good sleep, which is a really important part of staying healthy. And you can personalize your experience so that you can maximize your results. Let's say you have a goal of improving your skin health. The app can actually help analyze the overall health of your skin and then measure improvements as you follow your plan. And you can use the mental tracker alarm to wake you up at the right part of your sleep cycle so that you wake up feeling rested and ready to go. And getting good sleep and waking up feeling rested is definitely important when you're in the middle of a big project like this one. So if you're interested in using the mental tracker app, then check out the link in the video description below. The first day of any project is always exciting, but this one didn't exactly start off bright and sunny. <laughs> what a day to start. <laughs> All right, so it is officially day one in our friend's house and we are ready to get started with demo. We're a little bit wet, it is pouring outside. So we've got wet shoes, a car full of tools, and we are ready to get started. <laughs> What do you think? What do you think? Can you help? <laughs> okay. Okay, that was easier than I thought it would be. We decided to pull out this narrow cabinet to the right of the kitchen window because honestly, it's a little bit strange how it comes all the way to the window edge. And since I'll be removing the upper cabinets on the other side of the window, I really felt like this would give a more balanced look overall and honestly just look a lot better. Next, we took down the upper cabinets on the other side of the window and this is where we'll be adding open shelves later on. Most of these upper cabinets were relatively straightforward to pull down without damaging them at all. But unfortunately, this tall pantry cabinet was already falling apart a bit and was wedged in so tightly that by the time we got it all the way out it was literally falling to pieces. Wow look at it! It's looking so different. It's crazy what just like moving a few cabinets does. I don't know if you can tell on the camera. It feels so much more like open. This feels like a bigger, this is gonna feel like a big kitchen. This is so cool. So demo is well underway, but let's sit pause for a second and back up. Because even though demo day represents the first day of work in the home, it is definitely not day one of this project. It's hard to convey on camera in a short video how much time Andrea has really spent talking with the homeowners, looking for the perfect paint colors, countertops, buying materials, creating mood boards, and planning 101 other details around this project. So many compliments to Andrea for preparing well, and we just wanted you to see this side of the project before you go start blowing up a kitchen with without a plan. Now let's get back into demo. Once we had all of the cabinets out, I started working on removing the old backsplash and countertops. Wrong. When it came time to remove the sink, I had to have Dean put down the camera and come and help because this cast iron sink was so insanely heavy. That's why you wear glasses and closed toed shoes. Next, I pulled out the microwave and the little cabinet above it because I will be building a custom vent hood here and pulling these out now makes it easier to get this backsplash out. Before I 
could pull this backsplash out, I needed to remove these outlets. And so I gave Dean a voltage tester while I went outside to figure out which switch turned off the power to these outlets. That was it right there. You got it. Okay. With the outlets removed, I could take off the rest of this backsplash and the countertops. Okay, I'm gonna make some people mad and I'm gonna break this cabinet, but I can't get it out. And my disclaimer is, it is really water damaged already. It's moldy. That's the whole reason we're replacing it. It's a big pain in the rear end. Cheers. <laughs> Go get your dog food. After lunch, we started working on installing the replacement cabinet for the sink. I started by cutting a hole in the side that all of the dishwasher lines could go through. We had our friends pick up this cabinet at our local Home Depot in a style that matched their current cabinets. And we will be painting all of these cabinets the same color, so in the end, they're all going to look nice and cohesive. Like, their kitchen has more space than our kitchen. Like, this is crazy. I'm just saying, like, this is a good, this is a good size. Like. They'll have all this prep space that they've gained, and then like with this being bigger, that is nuts. It's another beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> we started out the next day by loading up all the tools I would need to build a new custom island in Vent Hood. And when you're loading tools that are this heavy, it's good to stretch the old back first. I also had some leftover plywood from our closet build that will work perfectly for the new vent hood. It turned out to be a really foggy day, but once we got to their house, we unloaded all of our tools and then jumped right back in the car. So we unloaded all of our tools, had to make some room. We're gonna go to a local building supply store Try and get some cabinets to put the island together today. Hopefully they have what we need. So they didn't have what we need, but I've checked online and I think Home Depot has all of the size cabinets that we need. Hopefully they do or we're in trouble. <laughs> Got nearly all of the supplies but there was one cabinet just out of reach and it seemed like they were a bit short staffed so we did a bit of problem solving of our own to get that cabinet down yep that's right we're in business Since I already knew the height of the kitchen island, I went ahead and had them rip down a piece of plywood that I was going to use for the side panels so that we can more easily fit it in our van because it was already going to be quite a tight fit. Hey, who needs a truck when you got a minivan? I mean, we got a full island in here. This bad boy. We started out by removing this old granite countertop, which proved to be a little trickier than I thought because it is so insanely heavy. What? Oh! Woo! I think I got strong legs. It's not a trampoline, babe. Right side down? Yeah. We put this on a scale, it actually weighs 1,072 pounds. I think it might. Oh, it's That's incredible. Oh gosh! But before Andrea starts building this island, why don't we introduce you to our friends whose house we're working in. This is William and Andrea, and we go way back. I mean, way back. And we've basically raised our families together over the years. William works at a local hospital in the HR department, and Andrea is a school teacher. Beyond being really appreciative for what these guys each do in their day jobs, they're also some of the most generous people we know when it comes to opening up their home to other people. And we've been plotting for a while now about 
how to help them do some of the renovations that they've been dreaming of and really help their budget go a long, long way. So here's a little sneak peek of what we're planning to do in the kitchen. For this space, we'll be reconfiguring the cabinets a bit, removing a few of them, adding some of them, and of course, adding a new custom island that you're gonna get to see us build today. This will give them a lot more of that much needed countertop prep space, as well as make their kitchen feel almost twice as big. I plan to paint all of the cabinets this beautiful dark blue gray color. We'll be adding white quartz countertops in this awesome budget friendly brick backsplash. Okay, it's island building day and we just got hopefully all of the materials unless I forgot something. We have rain forecasted in the next few hours so we are like praying and fingers crossed that it holds out and we can actually get this built. Step one is gonna be removing this thing which is somehow bolted down into the concrete. We're gonna find those screws and hopefully we can get it out without damaging these cabinets because they wanna reuse these out in the garage. There ended up being a few screws near the bottom of the island that were attaching it to these two by fours that were nailed down into the concrete. And once we found and removed those, it was much easier to get all of this removed. After a quick cleanup, we were ready to start bringing in the cabinets for the new island. All right, let's bring in those cabinets. Woo! That's it. Not quite. We're gonna have a bit of an island overhang. These cabinets are gonna be built up and I want my countertop on this side to line up. You got it, girl. I sound really confident. It's gonna look awesome. I started the build by making a base for the cabinets on the back side of the island to sit up on. Since those cabinets are actually upper cabinets, they are a few inches shorter than my base cabinets on the other side. To build the base, I measured the extra height that I would need and then ripped down some 2x6 boards to the exact height. What do you think? Is it looking pretty good? All right, so I finished up the base to hold up the backside of the island cabinets and I'm, I've drilled some pilot holes and I'm gonna drill into the concrete a bit and then use these masonry screws to then anchor this side down into the concrete just so we have a really solid base and then we have something to screw these cabinets into and I'll also attach this to that post. <laughs> Once the base was finished and in place, I was able to start setting and attaching the cabinets. I used a clamp to hold my cabinets perfectly together while I drilled a small pilot hole and then used two inch wood screws to attach the face frames together. You're an angry elf. From here, I basically repeated the same process and used wood shims in my level to make sure everything was nice and straight and level before attaching the cabinets together. Okay, so I'm having to improvise a little bit on how we're building the side panels for this because I really want to make sure we have enough room this way once I add posts under the overhang to be able to fit at least three bar stools. So I'm sending Dean on a mission to Lowe's to get a couple more four by fours. And anytime Andrea sends me on a mission, I make it my mission to do it as fast as possible. Once Dean got back, I got ready to plane down the boards and it was so incredibly cold outside. Oh my gosh. I'm not usually a baby with the cold. This is freezing. What's the wind chill right now? I can't get the wind chill for the entire- It's too cold. <laughs> I'm not trying to be dramatic. I used an old electric planer that I had on hand and this tool simply shaves a little bit off of each side of the board to give me a smoother finish and a more square edge. <laughs> Next, I cut each post to the correct height. After 
After bringing the posts inside, I used some wood filler to fill some of the larger knots and any cracks that I saw just to have a really smooth finish once these were painted. While I waited for the wood filler to dry, I started working on the side panels of the island. For that, I cut down this half inch plywood, some one by threes, and assembled everything using pocket holes and wood glue. I finished assembling the side panels, the wood filler was dry, and I was able to sand down each of the posts for a nice smooth finish. Once the posts were ready, I again used pocket holes and wood glue to attach them to the side panels. Finally, I was able to attach the panels and posts to the island itself and it really started to give it a finished feel. Are you a pro? <laughs> Almost. Where the island met this large floor to ceiling post, there wasn't enough room to add another four x four. And so I ended up having to get a little bit creative and used a couple of one by threes to make a smaller post for that corner. What are you doing? step was to cut some more one by threes that would attach to the posts on the overhang side of the island. This island is pretty much complete. The only thing left to do will be to paint it all the same color and then add plywood before the countertops are installed. And I just love how this island is coming together. All right, so it's a new day. We have the island completely finished. I'm gonna work on doing the new custom vent hood today. If we have time, we may even get to some paint prep so we can really knock that out later this week. We gotta get the project manager in here. Project manager, come on. Hey, we got work to do today. We got work to do today, man. It's a big day, man, it's a big day. For the vent hood, I'm gonna keep it really simple rather than trying to match these raised panel doors. And so it's gonna be basically a clean box, come out about 17 inches. I have plenty of leftover plywood from our closet build that we just did. And so we'll be using most of that and it'll get painted the same color as all of these uppers whenever we paint in a couple weeks. Once I knew the measurements of the new vent hood, I was able to start cutting down this three quarter inch plywood that I had on hand. I built the vent hood to be about 33 inches wide, 17 inches deep, and 30 inches tall. Next, I measured and cut the hole for the vent hood insert. Once I was sure that the vent hood insert fit, I assembled everything using pocket holes and wig glue. And finally, I sanded the entire thing using 220 grit sandpaper. Before Andrea was ready to install this vent hood, it was time to take a well-deserved lunch break. Honey, I'm home. After lunch, I got Dean's help and we attached the vent hood to the wall by screwing it into the steps. Nice work. 
Bring it in. <laughs> All right, so the vent hood is just about finished. I realized that their previous setup didn't have a duct for a vent, and so we're gonna have to get an AC guy to add that. So that's done for today. We'll worry about that next time we come. We're gonna work on attaching these base cabinets that we added. They're not actually screwed in yet. The sink cabinet is not attached yet, so we'll do this one first and then work our way down to this one. To attach the cabinets, I clamped them in place, drilled a small pilot hole, and then screwed the face frames together. Yes. Okay. That's it. That's it right there. I'll see you in a little bit. Oh, oh, there you are. All right. So before I can attach this cabinet, I'm going to go ahead and move this plug. We have an electrician that's going to bump this up here, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and pull this. We flip the breaker, the power's off. I'll pull that so I can get this installed and then let him actually install it up here. All right, since we ended up replacing the sink cabinet, the sizes of them are just slightly different and that happens. It can be a little bit tricky to mix and match like that, but I've brainstormed. I've got the opinion of a couple other friends of mine and I think the best option is gonna be to rip a board down and add some length to the bottom of this one. There's just, there's not enough on this to try and cut some of that off. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Get the hair in again. Dang. All right, perfect. Once I had these boards cut to the right size, I applied some wood glue, clamped it in place, drilled a small pilot hole, and then held it together with a wood screw. it as far as modifying the cabinets goes we have our new cabinets installed I've put those little extra pieces in the bottom and it's already looking better even though it's all different colors the island is finished except we'll be adding plywood later before countertops go in just because of the kind of countertops we're doing and the thickness of them you, just, you have to actually build it up a little bit and we've got the vent hood in it just needs the cover nailed on once we get that plug cord attached and that is really it as far as cabinetry goes. Next step will be to pull all the doors and drawers off, get everything really clean, and then we are ready to start painting it all. We started off paint day by loading up all of our supplies. This is incredible. Oh. This is Dean reporting to you live. We're getting ready for paint day number one. This should be a very exciting day and a very messy day, but let's get started, shall we? After everything was loaded up, we were ready to drive to our friend's house and get to painting. But let's back up a minute because even though today is day one of painting, this process started a few weeks ago. Before we even started demo, I was going to every paint store in town and grabbing every swatch of navy blue paint I could find so we could find the perfect color. And I just wanna note here that this was not a one day decision. This was something she looked at for weeks. In the end, I landed on the color Chimney by Bear Paint because it had just the perfect amount of dark gray with a subtle touch of navy and it fit perfectly with my overall design plan. After deciding on the color, we picked up all of our paint and supplies ahead of time, which included paper, painter's tape, bin primer, painter's tripods, bondo, a new paint suit, a large canvas drop cloth, several plastic drop cloths, and of course, a few essentials. It's paint week finally, and I have just a few prep things left to do before we start masking everything off, laying all the cabinets and drawers out because we're gonna paint all of it in their living room. The first and possibly the most important step is cleaning the cabinets. I sprayed on a generous amount of crud cutter and then used warm water and microfiber cloths to thoroughly scrub everything. This step is so important because no matter how awesome your primer is, it's not going to bond to a dirty surface. 
Once the cabinets were dry, I was ready to start masking off all of the openings. Now, I am masking everything off because I will be using a paint sprayer, but if you are brushing or rolling by hand, this step isn't necessary. When masking off cabinets, I like to use plastic for all of the larger openings and paper for the drawer openings, and I found that it works best if I apply tape to the inside of the cabinet face and then cut a piece of plastic that has the tape already attached to size. Once everything was masked off, I grabbed Dean and we spread out the large canvas and started laying out our doors and drawers. I gave all of the doors a thorough cleaning while Dean followed behind and propped them up on these painter's tripods. This is actually the first time that I've used these little tripods and I can say that they are 100% worth it and so much better than any other method I've used to prop my cabinets up. And I know a lot of people out there like to spray their cabinets hanging to save space, but I always prefer to spray mine laying down because I have zero chance of having sags or drips and just get a nice, perfect, smooth, even finish every time. After cleaning and getting all of the doors set up on the painter's tripods, I went ahead and wrapped the drawers with painter's plastic and tape. And then I masked off the doorways that led to their dining space and bedrooms to keep the paint dust and smells contained. Since I was going to be spraying in the living room, I went ahead and masked off the fireplace too, just to be safe. So the video makes this whole prep process look a lot faster than it actually is, but in reality, this whole paint prep time is about 75% of the work. But once all that prep work was finally finished, I was ready to get on my paint suit and start painting. You ready, Vader? Yo, bro. I started by priming everything with my favorite Ben Shellac primer. I decided to spray the primer with my HVLP gun and air compressor because it is much easier to clean this shellac primer out of than my airless sprayer. Yo! <laughs> it like keeps going over my eyes. Once I finished spraying the cabinet boxes, I moved on to spraying the doors and the drawer fronts. Once the primer had dried, I switched over to using my airless paint sprayer and started spraying on this beautiful dark blue paint. I ended up going with Bear's Alcat Enamel Paint in the color Chimney. Sherwin-Williams and Benjamin Moore both have Alcat Enamel paints that I've used and like as well, and to be honest, they all have their pros and cons, but they have a really similar performance in the end. Spraying this first coat of color on is always so exciting because it feels like the first step in really getting to see the vision come to life. And I just want to go ahead and make a quick side note here that even though you see me using a paint sprayer, you can totally do this using a brush and a foam roller. You would follow the same basic process that you see in this video, and I would recommend adding a product like Floatrol that extends the dry time of your paint and helps it to level even more. If you're spraying vertical surfaces, it's a good idea to go back and check for drips shortly after you've sprayed and keep that paintbrush on hand because even though I was spraying carefully, I did end up with a couple of drips I had to keep care of. Oh, so good. The next day, I went back by myself to flip all of the doors over, paint that side, and get coats two and three on all of the cabinet boxes. Okay. Camera fell. Another amateur move. I don't have a phone stand with me. <laughs> I flipped all the doors over. I got the first coat on the front and I did several coats on the back. I already had both sides primed, but I'm painting the fronts last so that if any of them end up sticking to the little stands I have them on, it's not, a, it's not as big of a deal if you have to touch up the insides of your doors. You always want to paint the fronts last, but look at that. 
And you can't beat painting your drawers and doors flat on the ground so you don't have any drips and you get a perfectly smooth finish. It's looking so good. Okay, so I finished all of the cabinet painting yesterday. It's the next day, we gave it a full day to dry. We're gonna start taking plastic off. I'm just kind of double checking, making sure I don't need any touch up, but I haven't seen anything yet. I decided I'm gonna try and go ahead and put the doors on just to get them out of the way, but you really wanna be careful, especially this first week and really even 30 days for that paint to fully cure and fully harden before you use your cabinets regularly. Project manager, what do you think about the uh, paint job? Huh? Oh, what's gone wrong? Annie, you got some tape on your leg. Oh, it's kind of pitiful. Here, there you go. You're free, man. You're free. Look at that finish. Are you like a pro or something? Not quite. It's pretty nice. of the masking off always feels a bit like Christmas to me. I think because such a huge part of the project is done and I'm really starting to get to see it come together. And I'm pretty sure I stopped every five to 10 seconds to stop and stare and tell Dean just how excited I was about all of it. It looks so good. How's it look? Good. Is it pretty? Yeah. What do you do if you smell paint? Blow his your nose. <laughs> Look at it, babe. It looks so good. The cabinets are pretty, even that like style. It's just so perfect. It's so pretty. We started out the next day like we do most days on a project, and that's with a trip to the hardware store. The next big project in this kitchen is the backsplash, and for that, we're going to be using these 4x8 faux brick panels. And then we went ahead and grabbed all the supplies that we would need for painting and played a little Tetris in our minivan. No, not doing this one first. <laughs> Back at the house, there was a lot going on. Our drywall guys were making a lot of repairs and really exciting countertops were finally being installed. All right, so countertops are in and they look incredible. This is when it starts getting so exciting because you walk in and you're just like, ah, you're just such big changes. Today, we're gonna be working on the backsplash and we're gonna be using these faux brick panels and going all the way to the ceiling. It'll be a great budget-friendly option and hopefully we can knock out all of that today. The first step in installing this brick backsplash was of course to measure from the countertop to the ceiling. Since I'm going to be adding floating shelves on this main wall, I thought it would look so great to carry that brick all the way up to the ceiling. This actually isn't the first time I've used these brick panels and in previous projects, I figured out that the best way to conceal these seams is to cut out the little half bricks between the panels. Once I had the overall size cut, I was able to measure and mark where the outlets and switches go. I 
drilled a starter hole and used my jigsaw to cut out where I had marked. Once all the cuts were done, I used liquid nails and a brad nailer to attach it to the wall. This next piece required a few more trips back and forth because I was cutting around the window and the windowsill. But in general, I followed the same basic process of getting my overall size cut and then focusing on the detailed cuts, then using liquid nails and the brad nailer to attach it to the wall. With the first couple of pieces on, you can start to see how cool this backsplash is really gonna be. And if it looks like Andrea's done this before, well, she has. We've actually used this same basic process in my music studios in the past, and it was a really cool, creative, and cost-effective way to turn a very normal room into a beautiful, professional-looking recording studio. Next, I continued cutting, gluing, and nailing, and with every piece that went up, it got more and more exciting. up in the backsplash area and as we were doing that we started looking at this wall and thinking it would look really cool just to continue it on that entire wall and also feel more realistic because it's a little bit weird to have your brick in in the middle of a wall even though we would put a little trim piece up there and we're like that's not that much more I love doing like a backsplash all the way to the ceiling because it makes it brings your eye up it's kind of like hanging your curtains high and this room it's just one more thing making this room feel so much bigger it looks so good we weren't planning on working on this part of the wall, so before we could get started, we had to move a few things out of the way. You might have noticed that on a few of these smaller seams, I didn't worry about cutting out the brick in that zigzag pattern, and that is because I'll be going back over all of this with drywall compound, and these smaller areas are gonna be much easier to conceal. Once I finished hanging all of the brick, I grabbed a huge bucket of joint compound and a six inch putty knife to apply it. I then scraped it on in a somewhat random pattern and the purpose of this is to give it that really authentic aged brick look and it also helps to cover up all of the seams. I made sure not to apply it too heavy all over because I knew I would be painting all of it white and I wanted to make sure I could still see that brick texture coming through. Our friends really love a sort of eclectic coffee shop feel and I feel like this brick backsplash really hits that nail on the head.
Once Andrea finished applying the joint compound to the brick, we got the whole living room and kitchen ready for paint, but we ran into a few snags. Thankfully, our friends were super gracious and said it wasn't that big of a deal, but here I'm gonna state the obvious and say you should definitely remove breakable items from your shelves before you try and move them. After getting all of the furniture moved out of the way, I went ahead and vacuumed all of the trim, the baseboards, the floors close to the walls, and a lot of the walls, because if you saw our awesome drywall guys hard at work, they were sanding so much of the drywall patching they had to do to the ceiling that there was dust on everything, even the vertical surfaces. I also gave all of the trim and a good portion of the walls a good cleaning with a microfiber cloth and cred cutter. After I finished wiping the trim and walls, I started masking off the cabinets, the lights, the windows, and anything else I didn't want to get overspray on because I would be spraying the ceilings. And here's where we hit our second snag, and this one was a biggie. Back in December, after hitting 100,000 subscribers, we finally broke down and got a nice new camera and lens, and that lens just got a taste of the pavement. The dog's up. Oh. So this is where we'll give a friendly reminder to like and subscribe to this video and help us get a new lens. Thankfully, after getting over that initial shock of damaging this brand new camera lens, my sister came through with a little afternoon pick-me-up and brought us some coffee and a couple of cute little visitors. Are you here to see mama work? You here to visit mama? After our coffee break and a few hugs, I finished masking everything off and was ready to paint. started with a Zinser water-based stain blocking bonding primer that I sprayed on all of the trim, the windows, and a few stains that were coming through on the ceiling. Since we had so many drywall repairs on the ceiling, I went ahead and primed the entire ceiling, which meant that Dean needed to make a run for more primer. So I did exactly as I was asked, and I got one thing and one thing only. Yep. Your timing is perfect. After finishing priming the ceilings, I had just a little bit of primer left in my gun and so I went ahead and sprayed the brick. Barely enough. <laughs> Since the primer dried on all of the trim first, I went ahead and loaded up my airless paint sprayer with satin paint and gave all of the trim two solid coats of paint. After Andrew finished the first coat of paint, I thought it was time for a cookie break. Oh, where'd you get those? I found these. <laughs> Sorry, William and Andrea, we may have eaten some of your Thin Mints. After I finished spraying all of the trim, I switched my sprayer to flat paint and started spraying all of the ceilings. After just starting the living room ceilings, we needed another gallon of paint and we ended up using every last drop of those two gallons.
Don't fall. <laughs> It's a little bit hard to really capture just how much better the ceilings really look, but after making a few drywall repairs and then giving all of it a fresh coat of paint, it is looking incredible and was more than worth all of the effort to do that. The next day, it was time to paint the backsplash and the walls. Now, I know there are probably a lot of you out there that are cringing as I cover up this brick, but you have to keep the end picture in mind. And once we install the wood floor and the wood floating shelves to bring in that warmth, I am really hoping that I will have convinced at least most of you that this was the right choice. You see, I've learned in situations like this over the last 10 years to just let the girl do her thing, let the artist paint their picture, and in the end, it always turns out incredible. Once I finished painting the brick, I started on the first coat on the kitchen and living room walls, and it is crazy what a difference paint makes. I went with one of my favorite whites, and that's Benjamin Moore's Simply White, and as I painted, it started looking like this blank canvas that was going to be perfect for all of the color and texture that we would be bringing in with the floors and the furnishings and decor. was able to jump in and help on the second and third coat and from there it went super fast. If you hadn't noticed already, as we've been working on this house and as Andrea's been painting this house, we haven't really made any effort to cover or protect the floors. And that's because we knew we had a big surprise in store for our friends in the form of brand new, beautiful flooring for their entire house. Now, Andrea has installed floors in three homes and she's more than capable of installing these floors, but we were on a bit of a time crunch and we wanted to keep making progress on this kitchen so that we could reveal it to to our friends in just a few days. So we texted our go-to tile and flooring guys and they were able to do the install which freed us up to continue making progress on the kitchen. Seeing these floors go in was so exciting because it was such a dramatic change from the old white tile and it's bringing in that warmth that this space needed. And I'm not gonna lie, after all of the work we've been doing these past few weeks, it was so nice to see some progress being made when I'm not the one doing it. So as progress on the floors continued, we were able to make a trip to Target to start purchasing all of the finishing decor items for the kitchen. All right, so this is a fun day. We get to go shopping for some of the finishing touches of the kitchen and so many of you were so generous and partnered together with us and so we want to take you shopping with us while we spend some of that money on the things that we're going to get to surprise them with. We're going in there and even better is i texted my friend justine who is always helping me on design stuff and i help her we work together a lot and she is meeting us here to help pick out all of the stuff we're getting okay this would be cool right yeah cool. i like so got the essentials yeah. I am so glad that Justine was able to come and shop with me and just help with all of the staging because especially on a bigger project like this when there are so many little details to think through, it is so helpful to have another person to be able to bounce ideas off of and just help think through all of those little details. <laughs> I wish we could give all of you one of these mugs. Just throw me a like if you know what I'm talking about right here.
The next day was a big day as it was our final day to finish off this kitchen and get it ready to reveal to our friends. So lots of goodies in here. Thanks guys. a long list of things to get done and so while they continued flooring in the back of the house I got to work on installing the toe kicks and quarter rounds to finish off the kitchen cabinets. I bought these pre-cut toe kicks at Home Depot but they were just a little bit too tall for these cabinets and so I ripped them down on the table saw to the correct height. finished nailing in all of the toe kicks, I measured and cut quarter rounds to finish off all of the edges. finished installing all of the quarter round, I came back and caulked all of the edges. You're crushing it, you got this. The caulk needed some time to dry before I could come back with touch-up paint, and so while that dried, we had an exciting trip to make. All right, what are we doing at Lowe's? Looking at appliances! Oh! Shut that door, and shut your mouth. The only problem was these appliances were huge and we don't have a truck, so we had to call on some help. You're the man, baby. You're the man, baby. Wow. We're in business. And it was definitely a huge help to have extra hands to unload these appliances. You might need a little lady help to get that fridge. It's quite the hoss. Okay. While the guys worked on bringing all of the appliances inside, Justine and I got to focus on all of the finishing touches in the kitchen. The first thing we tackled was the floating shelves. A few days ago, I cut these 2x12s down to size and gave them a good sanding. Not to be a dramatic Texan, but it is quite cold. <laughs> softer wood like pine I always use a wood conditioner before staining because it really helps avoid that blotchy look and gives a nice even stain. I then applied one coat of stain in the color Early American by Minwax and I chose this color because it was just the perfect medium tone brown with a nice rich warm color. After the stain dried, I came back and applied several coats of this clear shellac. Once the shellac was dried, these shelves were ready to be installed. 
I found these black metal brackets on Amazon and made sure to use a stud finder so I could screw them into the studs and then used a level to make sure my shelves were nice and level. After we had the shelves installed, Justine and I were able to tag team installing the hardware. I have so been looking forward to this day and it was so exciting to see all of these little details finally come together. I found this antique brass hardware on Amazon and I just love the super unique sort of eclectic coffee shop vibes that it has that really fits the exact style that we are going for. Once we got all of the hardware installed, I was finally able to give these cabinets a good wipe down because they had gotten quite dirty from all of the construction mess. And after that, it was really all hands on deck because we had very limited time and we were just trying to knock everything out before our friends got home. We also just want to give a huge shout out to Justine and her husband, Tyler, because they ended up spending almost the entire afternoon over here helping install appliances, install lights and staging and everything else. And there is no way we could have pulled this off without their help. After a month of hard work, we were finally ready to reveal this brand new kitchen to our friends. Here's the before, in case you forgot what it was like living here. Actually, I feel like I have yep. forgotten. <laughs> yes. We've made some minor upgrades. Just some minor, minor one, ones, so. yeah. Well, those are, those are additions. We called on our audience, on our friends, and they supplied us with the funds to get a new fridge and dishwasher. It's something like 200 people who have wow. given. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's not, like, it's not like just a couple family members. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Dean and Andrea, yeah. Justine, to yeah, man. all of you. Okay. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Especially like, you know, for the people watching y'all and, and giving, not even knowing us. That excitement's a little... Hey, bar stool! I was Look like... Look at the lights! Those are awesome! <laughs> there, we don't... Wow! The dishes wow. are those, so this, they're yours! They're your dishes! <laughs> My dishes? They're yours, yeah! Your dishes. <laughs> This is all for you guys. Not Everything. It's not staging material, so it's all. What? <laughs> this this is really really above and so much more beyond. If we, there's even a yeah, way of saying yeah, that. Yeah yeah yeah. This is the same. And the hardware. Make sure it's not looking. That's a nice dishwasher. It's a very nice dishwasher. Look at that. Magic. Yeah, these handles are looking so good. Aren't these nice? Yeah. How amazing does this kitchen look? I literally just can't even believe the before to after transformation. It's incredible and it looks so beautiful. And of course, their reaction is, is priceless. I mean, their minds, I, I think their minds are pretty much blown at this point. I am so glad we were able to save a big chunk of stuff to do that last day to really get an awesome surprise because it was just so sweet. Like, I think I actually had tears in my eyes yeah, when we were showing did. it to them because it was just, like overwhelming and such a fun thing to be a part of. And we just want to say thank you again to the more than 200 people who gave over $4,000, which helped us take this kitchen to the next level. So way to go team. 
Way to go, <laughs> team. It really doesn't even look like the same space. No, I mean, we took out cabinets, we painted the cabinets that were left, we gave them so much more usable counter space. Like, the kitchen functions so yeah. much better with the layout like it is. And then adding the floating shelves and the new pendants, it's just, it is a completely new kitchen and I'm so happy with how it turned out. But it is a crazy transformation and it's so, so fun to put this girl in action and see what she can do, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the journey doesn't stop here. We are gonna continue marching on in this house. Next, we're stepping into the living room. We're going into the dining room, into the pantry space. So there is a lot more transformation to come and a lot more surprises to come. So we'll catch you in the next video. Here we are again. Are you recording? I am. Are you ready to be recorded? Ready or not. <laughs> kids, man. What's that? Kids. Are you trying to film? Well, let me get a snack break right now. It's just like built in like sensors. Do, 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 do. Mom and dad are filming. I must get a snack right now. It's kind of like when I'm like, time to clean your room. And they're like, but I'm starving. Okay. <laughs> what are they doing? I think there's an antelope in distress. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, quiet.